in the name of uh, the Institute of Advanced Studies, uh, I would like to welcome George Nemeth, uh, member of the parliament and chairman of the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee of the Hungarian National Assembly. And I think we convinced with these three discussions that uh, at I ask uh, Central Europe is a strong focus. Uh, there are more than 50 people online, uh, Professor Schöpflin, uh, so just to mention a few. And uh, uh, I will pass the word immediately uh, to my colleague, uh, uh, András Nagy, uh, who is our senior researcher at IASC, and he approaches uh, Central Europe from the side of uh, literature, history, theater, so adding to the interdisciplinary field we have here from music to economics and uh, political sci uh, science, just to mention a few. So Andras, uh, the word is yours. Thank you very much. My name is Andras and it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Zsolt Német, the head of the Parliament Foreign Affairs Committee. And it's a rare opportunity and occasion that we can hear him as a politician, someone who is already more than 30 years in the politics and he was elected already in 1990 into the first free elected parliament he was already in 2004 in the european parliament and he was dealing all the time with foreign affairs issues from a totally new perspective so it's a very interesting and very fascinating career he had throughout all these decades and i'm very excited to learn about that more actually i know i know Joel name at already for 40 years i was lucky enough to be his teacher of literature still ages ago at the radnuti high school and i'm following his career with great appreciation and i am very proud that he published several books and let me show two volumes that are exceptionally exciting and interesting but there are two more books that were published by him and you can have also a portrait of a very interesting intellectual at the same time. Jolt Nemeth also had a very important and very interesting message he carried. Actually, the title of the book refers to faith or belief. He is coming from a Calvinist family. His father was very severely punished after the participation of the 1956 revolution. So he is bringing a lot of very important messages from home as well. And all his political career and his intellectual career is devoted to change our future, to change our life in Central Eastern Europe and in the global context for, for, for the better. I have his CV in my hand, which is extremely impressive. I will not read all, but I may want to mention that beside being already in the parliament as the head of the, the president of the Foreign Affairs Committee, he was Minister of State for a few years. He was participating in very important international organizations, committing, committees, including the NATO, the European Union. He's on the board of the Tom Lantosh Institute, and his focus is very much beside all what foreign policy means on minority rights. He was extremely instrumental to provide minority rights also for the minorities living inside Hungary and for all these ethnic Hungarians who are living outside the borders of Hungary. I just want to cut here brief because uh, time is running and we are very pleased to have um, a president uh, of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Zsolt Német, who just freshly came from probably a very interesting committee meeting. So the floor is yours and we are looking very much forward to listen to your lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Andras, uh, and uh, I am very glad to uh, see uh, Ferenc Mistrivets. Hello. Hi, George. Welcome. Oh, hello, Ferry. I'm glad that you joined us, even if it's only online, but I'm glad. Uh, and uh, I'm also very glad to welcome Ivan uh, Baba. Uh, Two old friends also, whom I know from my university years, uh, Ivan probably a bit earlier, uh, but sometime together with Andras Nagy when I was a high school student, uh, we got to know each other in 1981, say, uh, and with uh, you, Ferry, I think we have met sometime in 83, 84, uh, but uh, you are old friends, and I was also glad to see Mr. Uh, Shufflin, Yuri, uh, who has disappeared for a... Now you are there, okay, okay. Hello, hello, Yuri. Uh, very, very, very glad to see you. Uh, and uh, I am very honored 
that uh, you are also an old friend of mine from 88. So you are my friend from the 80s. Uh, and yeah. uh, this is an unbelievable uh, rare momentum. Uh, so I have a, a pretty long lecture, but I will cut it short if you don't mind. Uh, uh, and I will send it to you uh, if you wish, uh, but a few ideas I would like to develop. Uh, so I, I, I will uh, probably say only half of it but I intended uh, because now we are, I want, don't want to run out of time. And I apologize, but I had the Parliament Foreign Relations Committee uh, uh, meeting on America. And probably if there is a question in this respect, uh, I think it would be interesting to uh, discuss in V4 context. Few, first, I would like to uh, say a few uh, words in memory of uh, Elemir Honkic. And I'm very grateful for the invitation uh, to this ISK conference. Uh, I know that Elemir Honkic is a respected spiritual founder of the institution. Honoring him, I would like to start my lecture about the Visegrad Cooperation with the quotation from him about angels. Quotation starts. The main reason for our interest in angels is probably that people have an insatiable desire and thirst for defense in an empty and scary universe. Even those who lived in a monotheistic world needed further safety. And the world around us is increasingly unstable. Norman Stone, the British conservative historian friend of mine who died uh, a couple of months ago, bought a flat, for example, in Budapest. For this reason, he said he found something stable in an unstable Europe in Budapest. So had a desire for a piece of real estate here, where I am talking now not far actually from here, from the Hungarian parliament. Now, I would uh, not speak about the beginnings of the Visegrad for cooperation in 1335, but I think it is important to remember that this cooperation goes back to 1335. Uh, and uh, it is related to our geopolitical situation since then, which has not changed too much. But obviously, there are new elements in the game, superpowers and technology, and we are experiencing a past behind us in Central Europe uh, because we are just 30 years free and democratic. And when we got to know each other in the 1980s with the gentlemen I listed, uh, we lived in a totally non-sustainable world because communism as such was not at all uh, sustainable. And I think sustainability is probably the most important key word for our contemporary world uh, today. Uh, I would don't speak too much about uh, Josef Antal and uh, the first uh, uh, steps he made in Central Europe, but it's important that he was the one who has recreated. Uh, basically 30 years ago, uh, February uh, 1991, uh, the uh, Visegrad cooperation, alone with uh, his fellow uh, heads of state and government, Václav Havel and uh, the Polish uh, president, uh, Lech Walesa, the famous solidarity leader. And now a bit more in detail uh, what I think today about the Visegrad group. Uh, uh, now it is V4 uh, since Czechs and Slovaks got separated in 92 and is a distinctive and successful center for European future building. But is the key to our success? Well, V4 is a free cooperation. The Visegrad cooperation works today as the uh, other international organizations like the EU, for example, I believe should work. The V4 4 is an informal cooperation that cooperates only where there is a common interest, where we can enhance our chances by cooperation. 
where there is no common intention, we do not cooperate. We simply do not meet to discuss those issues which we don't agree. Everybody beats his own path. But obviously, it is not always clear where we agree and where we don't agree. So we need to talk uh, in the beginning about these subjects as well. Uh, the V4 is an alliance of four different states and four different nations. So the V4 group consists of different countries. The key to our success is not that we are homogeneous or very similar to each other. It is a misconception that we are the same or we are alike. We want to stay different. The Czech society is one of the most atheistic and the Polish is one of the most religious uh, in Europe. The Hungarian pragmatic approach to Russia is different from the Polish concept of total separation from Russia. The V4 is a group of four successful countries. We are successful one by one in ourselves. However, our regional cooperation, I believe, is part of our success because we cooperate in cases that enhance our success and we do not force other issues. You can measure the success of Visegrad cooperation in the success of its members. Uh, a few uh, 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 related uh, questions uh, uh, about this aspect. One of the most important common drive of our cooperation is that none of these countries want to give up their own success. It is a success driven cooperation, if I want to say, if you want to uh, put this way, or rather we want to continue our success stories. We are simply not ready to give up our results we achieved with sweat and blood by now since 1990 and preserving and advancing the success story that is making successible, that is making success sustainable. And here I am coming back to this key word. Uh, uh, in this regard, we need to underline we have a lot of conditions to sustain these successes. And for example, our immigration policy is one of them controlled borders related closely, or today our veto now in connection to the uh, so-called rule of law procedure, so-called I would like to underline twice. And basically the most important condition, I believe is a very committed protection of our sovereignty. Obviously this is never an absolute sovereignty because absolute sovereignty never existed. And these days uh, it exists uh, less and less, but still protecting sovereignty is an important uh, common uh, uh, ambition. Stability of the region, I think, is the fruit, a very important fruit of our cooperation. Why is this success significant among large economies like Germany, Italy, or France, because probably, most probably we in the V4 are going to stay the region of stability in Europe. I am asking now, what is the interest of the EU, if not an economically and politically stable Eastern flank, like the V4 states, bordering a increasingly unstable Ukraine, Belarus or the Balkans. Our region did not, did not collapse like countries in uh, uh, the Balkans. Greece is an example in a critical period when migrating groups have had the strongest pressure on Europe's borders and got as far as Berlin where they met Angela Merkel in 2015. Hungary, and this is a fact, is among the 10 safest states now of the world. Stability is an everyday category uh, in our understanding. Everyday reality is that you can practice religion or pray freely in our country. Nobody will cut off your head. Either you are a Christian, a Jew or a Muslim. 
You can walk in the streets of Budapest wearing a kippa and traditional Jewish dress freely. Uh, we had the Maccabi Games, the Jewish Olympics in Budapest last year uh, without any uh, uh, problem, scandal, or uh, even international uh, coverage. German and Dutch people buy houses in Hungary when they retire and they tell us they do so because they want a calm and relaxed old age, like my friend Norman Stone did. They tell this uh, to the real estate agents op openly once they are here. Foreign investments are safe in Hungary. Economy is more and more stable year by year, recognized by recently even Standard & Poor's. And employment rates uh, uh, speak also for themselves. Hungary is not a paradise yet, but it is safe, livable, and sustainable. And some more words about sustainability. In a broader sense, uh, what is our alternative European future that makes V4 vision characteristically distinctive? I have been calling it a sustainable future for Europe. And I mean sustainable in a wider sense than, uh, for example, the Danube circlement it uh, in the 80s, where we got to meet with Ivan Baba, uh, 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 trying to campaign against uh, the uh, Bush Gapchikovo Dam. I broadened this meaning into a holistic sense that includes environment, economy, and society as well. They are conditions for each other, because if we do not have money, uh, your last thought will be environmental protection. See the COVID-19 pandemic stricken states today. Uh, I mentioned economy, but I did not mention society. So sustainable society in our understanding is a reproductive society. If you do not necessarily import people from outside, which uh, we seem to agree in the V4, uh, we are on the common, common ground in this aspect. This is one of the hardest because turning trends related to personal decisions is extremely sensitive, difficult, and slow. Hungarian family support system got so rich and diversified by now that it is impossible to list up every element of it. A slow and slight trend turning is taking shape. Numbers of marriages uh, started to increase. Uh, abortions started to decrease. Number of babies started to increase. Sustainable society includes sustainable countryside with villages for which we also have a program. It also means inclusion of unprivileged groups like uh, Roma people, mainly actually in North uh, East and Southwest of Hungary. Stability of our societies are again, strategic elements of European safety. Also, we attribute a great relevance to V4 in the context of deeper integration of the region. The national growth of V4 states stabilized us one by one, but uh, we want to develop it together as well by deeper integration. We cannot efficiently trade within the V4 because we do not have good enough north-south highways or high-speed railways, uh, and we do not have enough gas corridors. We started to develop infrastructure to help our interest, which overlaps with the EU's interests as well. It also seems to overlap with the American interests because, but we will see this in the future, because in the Three Seas Initiative, um, the region located among the three seas, the North Sea, the Black Sea, and the Adriatic, they expressed their intensive, the Americans expressed their intensive interest in the infrastructural development, like uh, uh, LNG terminals in Poland and Croatia. These are aimed to relieve the Russian energy uh, dependence. 
But V4 is not only the regional cooperation I appreciate highly. Here, for example, we have got the B3, the Baltic 3. Uh, uh, I was very glad recently to have a video conference on the level of Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman between V4 and B3. And also I would like to draw your attention uh, to the enlarging Balkans countries neighboring us uh, uh, towards Southeast and also the Eastern partners uh, uh, and the Caucasus uh, uh, East to V4. The Visegrad 4 uh, and its fund pays a special attention to these two very important regions surrounding us, the Western Balkans and the Eastern uh, Partnership. And uh, what we have discussed on this video conference uh, made me quite enthusiastic. The topic was industrial cooperation with a high portion of added value. As a lesson from 2008 economic depression, we learned the renewed importance of industrial production in Europe, or rather local production. With the pandemic, we learned this lesson once again, long supply chains are not sustainable, again, this category anymore. And for that reason, the so-called economic autonomy of European Union or the economic autonomy of the Visegrad countries is getting more and more important category. Technological cooperation obviously is a key to our success. In general, we need to get in the technological vanguard, otherwise economy will not be sustainable either. Not in the long run, but pretty soon, Europe is lagging behind in the world's competition. And the key to get back to the front is obviously technology. In the V4 countries, it is mainly driven today by car industry. However, we started with, uh, uh, we all know, assemble factories. And now, thanks God, we are taking our share more in engineering. Hungary is building, for example, the first autonomous self-driving vehicle test track in Zalaegerszeg, which I think is a very good example uh, to this. So in short, uh, as a final word, uh, uh, dear friends uh, and dear students, uh, sustainable success is the key in the success of V4 and the V4 countries. Thank you very much for your attention.